<laughs> I'll invite you all to stand as you're able as we hear the gospel reading together. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, this is the last portion of this uh, chapter 10 we've been hearing for the whole month of June, in which Jesus gives some kind of best practices, some instructions to the disciples as they prepare to go out into the world to do the work of ministry. This is the close, Jesus' final instructions of this. Jesus says to the twelve, verse 40, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Christ. Please be seated. My friends, it is a good day for us to proclaim that it is a biblical principle that we practice welcome and hospitality to each and every person that we encounter in this life. Throughout scripture, consistently, Jesus offers us these words of welcome and an opportunity to welcome and be welcomed by others in the name of Christ. Here, in just these few short verses, we have Jesus challenging us in a wonderful way to consider what it means to be the one who is receiving the welcome to be the one who is welcomed in the name of Christ, to be an ambassador of Christ, so to speak. And whenever we think about being welcomed, we can't help but think of the inverse of what it is to then welcome others and be the one offering hospitality in return. It is a good practice as we follow Jesus to be people who are steadfastly and curiously committed to practicing welcome with one another in the world. Early on in my seminary time, I may have told some of you this story before, but it's a really good one. Early on in my seminary time, uh, a few of us aspiring young pastors went to, of all places, worship at a church where none of us were working on a Sunday morning. We selected a congregation that we would visit, we found their worship times on their website, and we went together. Imagine a group of bright-eyed, bright -eyed but sort of conspicuous young people on passion for Jesus, ready to go to worship and experience a new community of faith together. We showed up for worship on time. We found a pew, but realized as we got there, we were a little bit curious and uh, aware, is maybe the right thing to say, that we didn't want to sit in somebody else's pew, right? As a first-time visitor, of a congregation, how to avoid the pitfalls of unintentionally offending someone that you do not know. Please do not sit in their pew, right? We managed to find a place to sit. We figured toward the front would probably be a safe bet. And we knew how to navigate the hymnal. We knew the liturgy. We were pretty confident in our abilities to be able to participate in the worship service. And we did. Can you imagine average congregation like yourself, how you might react if you saw a handful of young people without any children coming to worship on a Sunday morning? People were so excited to see us. This group of young people who just happened to wander in through our doors, not asking to have their babies baptized, was like a miracle of all miracles. Even though we, seminary students, knew how to participate fairly well, we could show up and not be utterly confused. We also realized by the end of the service that showing up as visitors to another church's worship service felt a little bit like crashing a party you were not invited to, right? Because we didn't know the ins and the outs of when exactly you stand and when exactly you sit, we didn't know the particularities of how they shared the peace or who we might accidentally kind of bump into by virtue of just learning how to participate. And even so, 
so, we managed our way through the service. And after the worship service, we knew that there would be somebody who would be so excited about this young group of young people that they just wouldn't be able to help themselves. And certainly, during the coffee hour, a handful of people just sort of sporadically came up and introduced themselves to us. They asked us our names and who we were and what made us choose their congregation for worship. Some simple questions, friendly questions, nice people. These very basic social skills that are not unique to the church in any way helped us to feel really welcome, right, as visitors. Having folks go out of their way to come meet us, to say hello, to ask a couple of fairly uninvasive but kind questions to us, helped us as visitors to feel welcome. And so we went back a second week, and you can imagine how excited the people were that these young people came back for a second time. Jesus asks us to consider, as people of faith, how we offer welcome and hospitality to others. Yes, here, in church, when people come to worship or for any number of other things, but also how we practice welcome and hospitality as people of faith outside of this building. Jesus calls us to be ambassadors of Christ, to be people who represent the cause, the mission, the kingdom of Christ well in those small, welcoming, and hospitable encounters, and to be open to the uncomfortable reality of being welcomed by others in the name of Christ as well. Jesus shows us today that most of the time, all it takes to welcome is something simple like a cup of water or a smile or a friendly, well-intentioned question. Welcome does not have to be overly complicated, which is wonderful for us because it means that all of us, each and every one of us, can be people who practice welcome to others in the name of Christ. We can all do simple things to show hospitality, to show kindness and respect to our neighbors, that these simple things go a long way in showing welcome. But Jesus also has another word for us today, perhaps a more challenging word. Jesus begins these short passages by saying, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, meaning Jesus. Anytime you welcome another, you are actually welcoming Jesus in your midst, he says. So today, I invite you to consider how you would welcome Jesus if he came knocking at your door. And Amanda is going to help us think about how we do this as people of faith. Oh boy. My sweater is still wet. <laughs> Hold on. And I have some work to do because I just got noticed that a very um, special guest is coming to my house for dinner. It's Jesus. And so I've got a lot to do. I'm going to be getting ready. I'm going to be my sweaters. I know. I am like my own show today. There you go. Thank you. Everything's fine. Okay. Okay. So now that that's taken care of, thank you, Pastor Kim. I've got a lot to do. It's going to be a big day here. Um, I think I'm going to be doing some grilling and making a big dinner um, because Jesus is coming to my house. Oh, so I'm sorry, folks, but I'm no longer to be able to be here today. Um, I think I'm going to have to start making my grocery list. Oh, oh goodness, now the door is here. Hello. Hi. Hi, neighbor. I'm so sorry. My car just broke down a little bit, like a couple blocks away, and my cell phone is totally dead. Silly me. I did not bring a charger in my car for some reason today. Could, could I please just very kindly use your phone so I can call a tow truck to come get me? I, I, you know, I, I'd love to help you, but I'm sorry. I just can't. Um, you see, Jesus is coming to my house today, and uh, it's kind of a big day for me. Um, and I'm sorry this happened to you, but you know, 
I'm sure you'll figure it out. And you know, maybe this is just a good lesson for you. You should always keep a charger. <laughs> and you know, sometimes we just have to learn those hard lessons. Sorry to bother you. Okay. Yep. Good luck I'm, with your preparations. I'm sure you'll be fine. It's not really that hot out. So, you know. All right. See you I'll later. Be, I've really walk. got a lot to do. I'm just really sorry, but I've just got a lot to do. So I'll just walk on to the sure, next. Sure, you'll room. be fine. Okay. You'll be okay. fine. And chargers. You know. Good grief. Back to my list here. All right. Oh, okay. List. I've got to make. Got to run to the store. Um, and this whole house needs to be redecorated and cleaned. I mean, it's just a hot mess. Oh, no. oh shoot. Hello. Hi, nice lady. I was just riding my bicycle on the sidewalk, and I fell off, and I scun my knee, and it's bleeding a lot. Do you think you could help me, please? It really, really hurts. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you know, there are knee pads for these things, and maybe you shouldn't be riding around recklessly. I mean, don't you have some kind of device you can be on right now? And I'm sorry, but it really no, hurts. I have Jesus is coming for dinner today. It's a big day. I've got lists to make, and I've got to redecorate the whole thing. No, no, no. You're There's a fine. lot of blood. You know, tough love. You've got to just, you know, really. This is maybe a very good lesson learned for you that, you know, knee pads and safety equipment can go a long way to stop the bleeding. And, you know what, just turn yourself back to the bike, okay. lead away. I'll go find my mom. And, you know, yeah, you know what, where are your parents? <laughs> I, if Jesus is coming and I've got a lot to do and I'm sorry, but I just cannot be so helpful today. Normally I am. I normally am, but today, no. Oh, let's see, what else do, okay. Potatoes, I don't know if Jesus would like to eat potatoes. Maybe a casserole, maybe a hamburger casserole, maybe not grilling, I don't know. Um, oh, I've got more cleaning to do, oh shoot. Maybe that's the groceries, yes? Hi, I'm out, I'm out on my run, and I'm just, I'm, I'm about halfway through my loop. Huh? And it's, it's so hot. Could I, could I trouble? Oh, could I trouble you for a cup of water, please? It's so hot outside. I cannot believe this. I just, you know, if you are gonna, if you're gonna be all healthy and run, maybe you should think of. There's like called a Camelback. It's a, it's a backpack with water in it that you can carry. And you know, and I'm so I sorry. Heard. Yeah, it's so yes. helpful. And there's, there's Ooh. even belts that you can wear with water in them. Do you have one? No, 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 I'm sorry. I am okay. so busy. Guess what? Jesus is coming today, so I have to clean and get ready, and I don't have time to be making you know, really water hot. cups it's really for hot. people who are not prepared for the things that they do. It is really hot out. It's been okay. a busy day at my doorstep here, but no, why don't you know, okay. big breaths? There's water in the air, H2O. You know, just do that. Okay. You're going to be fine. Turn okay. yourself around. I've got a lot to do because okay. Jesus is coming. Okay. 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 So that's Sorry. a big day. Sorry. Bigger than like a little dehydration. You're going to be fine. Okay. Drink be, or just breathe. It's only six just more breathe. Miles I, got I got a lot to it's do. Fine. I got, I don't even know. I hope that door doesn't ring anymore because I've got so much to do here. Because Jesus is coming. Ring, ring. Oh, ring, shoot. ring. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Amanda. This is Jesus calling. Hi, Jesus. Oh, I'm so excited for you to come. I've got a whole menu planned. I bet you do, Amanda. Yeah. I really appreciate all your work preparing for me, but you know what? I just, I already came by three times, and you, you didn't welcome me any of those times. No. No, 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 no. Those were just our silly, silly people in our community who just don't prepare things and, and they get themselves into pickles. Jesus, no, no, no. I am here and I'm ready for you. I stopped by three times, Amanda. I'm so sorry. Maybe oh. it'll work out to visit another day. I am so sorry, Jesus. I am so sorry. Peace be with you, Amanda. I still Thank love you. you. <laughs> Some of these 
old camp skits we use at Bible camp for our kiddos are perhaps a little bit silly, but sometimes they're right, they hit the nose right on the head, right? The nail right on the head. That's the phrase. When it comes to thinking about how God calls us to follow and live in our lives, Jesus challenges us today by saying, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. So we ask ourselves, perhaps the difficult question may be a little uncomfortable. Would we welcome folks differently if we viewed them as welcoming Jesus into our midst? Would we welcome folks, regular people, the person whose car breaks down, the child who needs a little bit of a band-aid, or even the friendly runner who just asks for a cup of cold water, or anyone else, would we welcome them differently if we viewed them as Jesus himself, asking for just a little bit of our time, a little bit of our grace, and a minor inconvenience from us? I once heard it said that you will never look into the eyes of someone Jesus does not love. As people of faith, we are called to be people who welcome, as though it is Jesus himself in our midst. Let us follow God in the kind of way that does not show partiality to who we welcome or when we welcome, that perhaps even when it is an utter inconvenience to us and interrupts our good plans, even plans to host a dinner for someone who's coming to our house, let us be people who are willing to be inconvenienced for the sake of showing radical welcome and hospitality to the one who crosses our path and dares ask for our compassion. Today, as Jesus invites us into these words around welcome and into a practice of hospitality, I invite you to consider who it is that you welcome who you welcome easily and well and with comfort in almost a second nature kind of way in your life. And I ask you the opposite too. Who is it that you are less ready to welcome? Whose presence might cause you to pause or pull back or even refuse because they are not in your normal circle or because perhaps you are not sure how to navigate the situation? Jesus offers no qualifiers in this text when he asks us to welcome and be welcomed in return. Jesus does not act, offer parameters or a prescription or dictates on who or when or how. He simply says, welcome, and be welcomed in return. The good news, people of God, is that whenever and wherever and whomever we welcome, we do it in the name of Jesus, and we do this for the glory of God. And so often in the life of the church, as it exists within the building, we are great at this. We roll out the red carpet for one another and for visitors. We offer coffee and donuts and hospitality of all kinds. We offer a friendly face and a word of welcome and a recognition that you are known and welcomed here whenever we practice welcome. Here and anywhere we might be, we welcome in the name of Jesus. And in that, perhaps, when we do open the door to the stranger who crosses our path, when we let in the one who surprises us with their presence, we encounter the living Christ between us. And this is our reward. Let us embrace our reward. Let us seek it. Let us pursue it as we follow in welcoming in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.